Hey yo, Duckies, Andy Lippy here, back with another OBS tutorial, and today we're looking at this insane lens flare effect that I am actually doing right now live inside of OBS. It's super easy to use, it's just a cheeky little script, and honestly, it is awesome. I'm in a really bright background, so you can't really see how good this is, but we're going to go straight into it, super easy to do, and you can also animate it just like you're seeing right now, alright? Let's get into it, put your rock over the stone, let's go. This portion of the video is sponsored by Own.TV. Own.TV is literally a one-stop shop for everything streaming related. They've got overlays, alert packages, emotes, sub badges, bit badges, absolutely everything to take your stream to the next level and make it look super professional. And what's better is you can actually save yourself a cheeky 50%, that's right, 50, half price of absolutely anything using off code Andy50. All the links are in the description down below and go to supporting the channel. So thank you very much guys and thank you own.tv for sponsoring this video. So getting this bad boy installed is super easy. We can get it straight from the OBS website. It's actually by a creator called Carver. I think that's how you pronounce that uh, they've got some incredible little scripts that are really useful especially since the shader filter plugins gone missing you guys can check out my video if you are wanting to download shader filter because it is still available it's just not on the obs website i'll leave it up there and in the description so this is a script for a lens flare effect and what's even better about this is there's two different lens flare effects uh, in two different scripts which i will run you through right now so we've got all the information about it just here. It's only been tested on Windows 10, so obviously any feedback or anything like that, please leave it on the OBS forum so that Carver can actually get it fixed, okay? So we just need to head up to the download section in the top right, and that'll download a zip file. We can open up that zip file, and it's just got a standard .lua file, which can be put anywhere on your computer, but I like to put it inside the scripts folder in the OBS folder. So that folder is on your C drive. It's wherever your OBS Studio folder is. Usually it's in Program Files or Program Files 86. Mine's in Program Files. We go down to OBS-Studio, all lowercase, and if you go inside of Data, and then in OBS Plugins, not Scripting, and you'll see front end dash tools. We just open that up and go to scripts. This is where all your scripts will be placed. So you can see I've got the lens flare there and lens flare too. So I've got these already installed. All you need to do is copy and paste the, the actual file straight into there. It's gonna ask me if I want to replace it because I've already got it installed. It might ask for admin privileges as well. And then that's it. It's all installed, ready to go. The second one looks exactly the same. I'm gonna leave that link in the description below as well. And you can just do the exact same thing. Go up to the top right, press download. That'll download a zip file for you. And we just need to copy that file directly to where we copied the other one to as well inside your scripts folder. So we just paste it in there, mine again asked to replace. So once all that's installed, we can jump inside of OBS. So I'm going to use this blank color source just to make it easier so you can see what's actually happening on screen. You can use this with any source at all. So the, what we need to do first is go up to the tool section and go down to scripts. And you'll see all your different scripts that you use here. Make sure you've clicked the scripts on the, the top left. And then we're going to press the plus sign. The reason why I told you to copy it into that scripts folder is because it will automatically open this folder, which makes it a lot easier than browsing around your computer every single time. So I'm going to add the lens flare just there. Double click into that, and that's it. Lens flare effect filtered by Carver, no property is available. That's it, it's already on. And if we want the second lens flare, we press the plus sign, and we just add the second one as well. And it'll say lens flare 2 by Carver, no property is available. That's it, we're all ready to go. So once that's actually installed, we can click on any source and go to filters. And when we do that, we can press the plus sign and you will see lens flare and lens flare 2 that have appeared. So I'm going to use lens flare. Uh, I'm going to call it lens flare, that's fine. And you can see it straight away on the screen. It looks absolutely beautiful. We've got a ton of different settings that we can use. So we've got the, uh, the center point on the X axis, which is what I was doing on my example. And we've also got the Y as well. So you can have it all animate around. There's some really beautiful ideas that you can do with this. We've got the amount of how bright it is. We've got the complexity as well. As you can see, you can have it very minimalistic. You can do the zoom of the flare as well. There's so much that you can do with it. The light scatter. Um, there's just so many things. Or just play around with all these different settings just to find the exact right thing 
that you guys want. You've obviously got uh, the animation turning on and off. That kind of just gives it a little bit more natural look, if I'm honest. And that is it. That is how easy it is to use. So you're probably thinking, right, but you had it all animating live whilst you, you weren't doing anything. So to do that, all we need to do is just make sure you've got the Move Transition plugin that was created by Exceldro, the most powerful OBS plugin. It's insane. I've got tons of video on it as well. Uh, get that all downloaded and installed. I'll leave that link in the description as well. And when you're inside of OBS, you can actually add another filter to whatever source you've added this lens flare to. Press the plus sign and go to move value and press OK. Give it a name and call it whatever you like. And this will allow you to basically move the value of any of these settings on the lens flare. So we select move value and I'm going to choose the lens flex. That's the filter that we're going to be using. You can either do a single setting or you can do all the settings. So as you can see here, this has pulled the list of all the settings that are available on the uh, lens flare. So if I start moving these around a little bit, so I'm going to move the X and the Y, maybe turn the amount down uh, and the complexity, but then maybe I'll zoom the flare in as well. More light scatter, uh, give it some more rays. All, all these different things, I can then change the duration. So I want it to be over five seconds. So that's 5,000 milliseconds. You've got different easing effects. So you've got easing, uh, no easing, ease in, ease out, and ease in and out. You've got the easing function as well. So just play around with them until you get your desired look. And then when we press the little I, so if I press the little I now, you'll see I'm not being funny, that looks insane, doesn't it? So you're probably thinking, yeah, but you, you're making it like automatically move around uh, and constantly move rather than just doing the one movement. So the way that I was doing that was I was creating another move value filter. So if I add another move value, I'm going to call it move value two for now, that's fine. And I'm going to go to the lens flare because that's the filter that we want to select. And I'm going to do all the settings just like so. And we can do this as many times as we want to get different effects. So I'm going to move these around again. So I'm just going to press get values and then I'm going to move them around so they're somewhere completely different. As you can see, I'm just making this completely random at the moment. Do a bit more zoom maybe, turn the light scatter down, uh, maybe brightness down a little bit, ray count down. Uh, I think that looks good. I'm going to do this over another five seconds, so 5,000 milliseconds. I'm going to leave all the, the smoothing and easing and everything like that. So now when I press this, it's going to move to somewhere else, like so. So that almost comes off the screen onto the screen. So if I go back to the first move value that I created, there's actually a section right down at the bottom that says next move, and I can go to move value two. So once move value one is finished, it's going to move to move value two. And if I select move value two and go right down to the bottom, I can actually tell it to do the next move to go to the back to move value one. So now we've created a loop and we can obviously add as many of these different move values as we want. And when I press move value, that'll start moving across the screen and then it'll get to the end and it'll start moving back to where it was before. So you can do as many cool different things as this and it will constantly loop. So you'll be making some really dynamic uh, overlays and different things like that. It looks super awesome and it's so easy to use. I've not really come across many issues with it. It seems to be very light plugin, uh, well script. If you guys have got any questions, please let me know in the comments down below and obviously feed it back on the OBS page as well. Big huge shout out to all these people that allow me to make this content full time and if you want to consider supporting then please join Patreon or using channel members or press the super thanks if I've been helping you out enough alright. And check out one of these videos just here because that will teach you how to use the move transition filter alright. Put your rock over the stone, see you in the next one.